uh, in one of your footnotes, you read, um, you wrote that human rights, um, the the particular phrase incitement to hatred or the particular clauses around incitement to hatred were actually um, sponsored or, or pushed, um, pressured by the USSR in the, in the formation of the um, Conventions on Human Rights. Can you uh, commentate around that a little bit? What's the, what's the implications of the USSR's involvement around, it, with the intention of providing restrictions on free speech, you, you wrote? Yes, um, <clears throat> that was brought to my attention by uh, a, a very prominent uh, lawyer and campaigner for <clears throat> freedom in this country, Augusto Zimmerman, who's a professor in, in, in Perth, professor of law in Perth. And it was Augusto who brought that to my attention. I did not know that. Um, and I think it's very interesting that a totalitarian state should lobby for uh, the inclusion of any kind of, 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 of a certain form of words that would actually be used to shut down debate in, that, in, the, in the country uh, where that was sponsored. So I, I don't know much more about that, but I thought it was a very interesting point that Augusta made. And it needed to be included because it showed how, it showed how in fact, what can seem to be the language of tolerance can be used to stop to be in a, can be used in a very intolerant way to stop people dissenting, to stop people criticizing, um, and we need to be aware of that. I'll give you an example. My Iranian friend who drove me over tonight, <clears throat> he was telling me he loves uh, U.S. There's a certain U.S. Um, crime show that he he really likes, and he was amazed because in this show uh, there was speculation, an American show, speculation that the US government and the US president, it's fiction remember, <laughs> but the US government and the US, and the US president were actually behind significant threats to world order. Well we can imagine what sort of a show this is and he loves it, so it was great, but what really impressed him, perplexed him I think is even better word, is that Americans could be allowed to make shows that talk about the threat in a fictional way that their own governments pose to the peace of the world. He thought that was just amazing. Mm. And in Iran it wouldn't be allowed. In no. Soviet Russia it wouldn't be allowed. That would be incitement. Incitement to hatred, yeah. yeah. So the, the background where you uh, talk about political virtue, um, you're talking about government-imposed multiculturalism. It's not the only and certainly not the best way of strengthening civil society. Liberalism, which is not the American left form of government, but a form of liberty. Um, liberalism also seeks to promote such strength. Uh, the liberal commitment, however, is to tolerance as political virtue, not as moral virtue. Oh, I see. <clears throat> when I was talking to Dave earlier, he didn't tell me that this was going to be an examination. <laughs> <laughs> I assume some intimacy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, test on every page. Um, yes, political virtue. I love the juxtaposition of those two things because what we're criticised for when we disagree with, uh, let me generalise, someone from the left, is that we have somehow committed some moral transgression and Jesus wouldn't be so judgmental and how dare you essentially disagree with them. Um, but what they're asserting is a moral virtue where we might agree with, uh, certainly agree with the principles of tolerance, but not as a hard absolute, because they're a political virtue and there is a, there is a spectrum. So expand that more you're, for you're us. You're almost answering the question, actually. <clears throat> because by That's why I shut up. By my, Back to you. <laughs> by, by moral virtue, um, I mean that kind of virtuous behaviour which we would recognise as being morally sound. There is, there is a moral quality to um, behavior that's courageous, for example. Um, and we'd say that courage is a virtue. When, when I use the phrase political virtue, I'm really using it in a, in a, slightly, uh, in a slightly different way. And it becomes about the way in which um, a position is signaled. You know, we have the phrase virtue signaling. And when we talk about virtue signaling, we're not talking about that sort of moral virtue. Virtue signaling is a way of saying, look how good I am. Mm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to do something, I'm going to say something, I'm going to <clears throat> perform an action that will signal to the world what a good person I am. That's not moral virtue, that's, a, that's an example of political virtue. And that's really what lies at the heart 
of, of that distinction there. Another phrase that captivated my attention on your chapters on religious freedom and liberty was aggressive secularism. Well, <clears throat> yes. Um, I think everybody in this room may have a sense of what, what we mean by aggressive secularism. Secular, secular, I mean, it's, it's a word that is used in all kinds of ways, and it, it's, a, it's a bit of a rubbery word because mm. it, has so, it has so many uses. When we say that Australia is a secular country, when I say that, what I mean is it's a country that is not ruled by, is not ruled by the church or you know, the bishops or the mullahs. It's a country that is ruled by a, a democratically elected government. And the law that a democratically elected parliament passes is the law of the land. And that's the law that every citizen of this country, every person in the country has to obey. A secular state is one where that sort of practice is absolutely paramount. Whereas a theocratic state would be a state where um, the mullahs or the bishops decide what is law and what is right and what is wrong. So that's secular. But there is an aggressive form of secularism that would seek to drive any kind of religious discourse out of public debate altogether. Because in a, in a genuinely secular liberal society such as ours, there should be room for Christians and Jews and Hindus and Muslims to, to enter into public debate about matters that are of importance to them. They can't expect that their views will always prevail, but they can expect mm. to be heard. They can expect to be able to express those views without being told uh, to without being silenced. Mm. Now, I think aggressive secularism seeks to seeks to bring about just that silencing of anything that smacks of religion, anything that smacks of um, of, of of godly values, really. And you know, we're seeing it, for example. It's it, and it's coming back, and it's coming. I think it'll come with some vengeance this time in the euthanasia debate. Mm. And you know, Andrew Denton has been leading the charge on this, amongst others and thinks that when some Roman Catholic, or some, let's say some Christian members of Parliament, raise concerns about the introduction of legislation to enable physician-assisted suicide, then that means we're a theocratic state being run by you know, these backroom Christians who are pulling the ropes instead and telling us what to do mm. and what to believe instead of allowing us in this free, in, you know, the free air of, in, of, of, of enlightenment secularism to make decisions for ourselves. That's an example of aggressive secularism. So what, um, what aggressive secularists would argue is that freedom of religion is an internal freedom. You can believe what you want and you can practice what you want, perhaps even within the confines of your your church or cathedral or, or temple or your home on a Sunday or the privacy of your home. But you dare not offer your religion publicly. It's an internal thing, a private thing only. That's right. Is there a, is there a practical um, ability, do you think, for them to separate our our belief, our freedom to believe, from our freedom to speak. No, I don't think so. I think freedom of freedom of religion is not an absolute right that trumps every other freedom. Clearly, and I, we, we've already covered that. You know, it, freedom of religion doesn't mean doesn't mean that my beliefs about religious law, for example, take precedence over secular law. But freedom of religion goes with other important freedoms, freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, freedom of association. Um, and that, when, when, when you place freedom of religion in what I call that quartet of freedoms, then we start to see how it actually plays out in society. I would say, in fact, freedom of, be of belief is, is meaningless. You know, you're free to believe that the moon is made of cheese. So what? Mm. It's not so. It much would be hard to pass a law against things that go on in your mind. Exactly. Impossible to you enforce. Believe, that you can believe that the moon is made of cheese, and we will all get on with our lives. But if you want to practice that belief, uh, and let's move away from cheese because that's just a silly example. But if you want to practice that belief, that's when the aggressive secularists will say, "Stop! You cannot." Cross that line. Mm. Whereas in, in a truly secular, free society such as ours, religious people should be entitled to say, hang on, there's something 
odd about this. There's something that is that is strange. And it's invariably the Christians who get challenged on this, I have to say. I, I wouldn't mind as much yes. if the secularists came out and told uh, the Mufti of Australia, Dr. Muhammad, also to stop, uh, uh, to, to, to shut up and to get back in his box. But nobody would say that to him. But mm. the Christians are a soft target. Yep. Now, I, I think that's, that in itself is a cause for concern, and that was one of Andrew Denton's um, uh, criticisms. But I think that, uh, that's say, the criticism of Christians. But mm. if, if we're going to, at least we're going to criticize religion. If the aggressive secularists are going for, for, for religious people, let's go for them all. Yep. Whereas it does tend to be the Christians who get it. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you really enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Have a look at this great video next and check out the website for even more interesting articles and episodes later.